It was a quiet afternoon in the heart of the city. The restaurant, known for its fine dining and luxurious atmosphere, had just entered the lull between lunch and dinner. The waitstaff moved efficiently through the polished wooden floors, preparing for the evening rush. The aroma of freshly baked bread and rich sauces hung in the air, blending with the gentle hum of conversation from the few patrons who remained. The restaurant was known not just for its exquisite food, but for its reputation as a place where business deals were made and well-to-do clientele mingled. Today, however, it felt particularly quiet. The staff went about their tasks with precision, knowing that the calm wouldn't last long. Soon the tables would fill with the usual crowd and the energy would shift. In one corner, a group of well-dressed businessmen discussed their plans for the evening, while at another table, an older couple enjoyed a late lunch. The rest of the tables were vacant, but the staff knew it wouldn't be long before the next round of reservations would begin to stream in. The restaurant prided itself on its reputation, and the waitstaff took great care in maintaining its high standards of service. Among the staff was Julie, one of the newer waitresses, who was still learning the ropes of dealing with high-end clientele. She was eager to prove herself, and today seemed like the perfect opportunity to show her worth. She moved quickly from table to table, making sure everything was in order, unaware that the day would soon take an unexpected turn. As the door swung open, the staff turned to see a man enter, unnoticed by most, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. He was elderly, and his presence immediately caught the eye of Julie, who was stationed near the front. The elderly man stepped inside the restaurant with slow, measured steps. His face was weathered with time, deep lines etched across his dark skin but his posture remained proud. He wore a simple but neat coat, a well-worn cap, and carried an air of quiet dignity about him. There was something about the way he moved, steady and confident, that contrasted with the age his appearance suggested. As he entered, the ambient noise of the restaurant seemed to quiet just a bit. He stood there for a moment, scanning the room as if searching for something or someone. His eyes, warm but tired, took in the gleaming tables and neatly arranged place settings. He had the look of someone who had seen much in life, but wasn't easily shaken by the unfamiliar. Julie, however, noticed him immediately, her eyes narrowing as she took in the sight of the man. He didn't fit the typical profile of the restaurant's clientele, while the other patrons were dressed in business attire or fashionable clothing. This man seemed out of place, his clothes plain and practical. Without a second thought, Julie approached him, her expression unreadable, but her demeanor already cool. As she walked over, she couldn't help but feel an instinctive judgment rising within her. The elderly man didn't belong here, she thought. This restaurant was reserved for a certain kind of patron, and he clearly wasn't it. She approached with polite indifference, her smile barely reaching her eyes. Good afternoon, sir, Julie said, her voice professionally neutral. Can I help you? Julie's first glance at the man was filled with silent judgment. She couldn't quite place it, but something about him seemed out of step with the restaurant's usual atmosphere. His clothes, though neat, were too simple for the high-end establishment. His slow, deliberate pace as he entered the restaurant seemed to disrupt the swift, organized flow of the space. She could already feel her patience thinning as she approached him. The elderly man looked up at her with kind eyes and a small, polite smile. I was hoping to get a table, he said in a calm, deep voice that held a trace of an old accent, something Southern, perhaps. Is there a place where I can sit? Julie hesitated, glancing around the half-empty restaurant. Of course, there were tables available. There were always tables available at this time of day. But something inside her balked at the idea of seating him among the regulars. She wasn't sure why, but the idea of this man taking up one of the prime tables made her uneasy. The restaurant was known for catering to a certain crowd, and this man didn't seem like he would blend in. Do you have a reservation, sir? She asked, her tone a little more pointed than necessary. She knew full well that most of the tables at this hour didn't require reservations when one comedian waited to delay seating him. The man shook his head, still smiling politely. No, I don't have a reservation. I just came in for a bite to eat. His words were simple, but there was an underlying tone of patience as if he had been through this sort of encounter before and knew how to handle it with grace. Julie's eyes flickered with uncertainty for a moment. She glanced over her shoulder at the few patrons scattered around the restaurant, then back at the elderly man. 
There was something about him that made her uncomfortable, but she couldn't pinpoint exactly what. Maybe it was the way his presence stood out against the luxurious backdrop of the restaurant, or maybe it was the quiet confidence in his demeanor, despite his simple attire. I'm sorry, Julie said, her voice flat and dismissive, but we're quite full at the moment. You might want to try somewhere else. The elderly man's smile faded just slightly, but he didn't seem surprised by her response. His eyes, however, reflected a quiet disappointment. He didn't argue or raise his voice. Instead, he nodded politely and stepped back, preparing to leave. There was a dignity in the way he handled her refusal, a grace that made Julie feel an unfamiliar twinge of discomfort, though she quickly pushed it aside. Just as he turned to leave, another waiter passing by glanced at the interaction. He hesitated, looking between Julie and the man, sensing the tension in the air. He opened his mouth to speak, but quickly decided against it, hurrying back to his station. No one else seemed to have noticed, but there was an unspoken awkwardness that hung in the air after the encounter. Aunt Julie returned to her duties, but she couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something wasn't right. She had done her job, hadn't she? After all, the restaurant had standards to maintain, and not everyone was a fit for such a place. But even as she tried to convince herself of that, the image of the elderly man's quiet, disappointed face lingered in her mind. As the elderly man reached the door, he hesitated for a moment, as if reconsidering something. His hand hovered near the handle, and he turned back around, his gaze searching the restaurant one last time. His eyes fell on Julie again, but this time, his expression was more resolute, as though he had made a decision. He took a deep breath and walked back toward her, this time with more purpose. Excuse me, he said softly but firmly. I was really hoping to have a meal here. I don't want to cause any trouble, but it's important to me. Julie, surprised by his return, stiffened. She didn't understand why he was so insistent. I'm sorry, sir, she repeated, her voice a bit colder now. But as I said, we're full. The elderly man's eyes narrowed slightly, not in anger but in quiet determination. I've eaten here before, he said calmly, looking her directly in the eyes. I've been a customer of this place for years. I know I'm not dressed as fancy as some of your other patrons, but that doesn't mean I don't belong here. Julie felt a prick of discomfort again. There was something in his words that made her feel as though she had misjudged him, but she didn't want to back down. She glanced over her shoulder, hoping to catch the eye of another waiter for support but no one seemed to notice the growing tension. I understand, sir, she said, her tone more defensive now, but we have certain standards, and I'm afraid we can't make exceptions. I'm sure you understand. The elderly man sighed softly as if tired of this familiar dance, but instead of leaving, he gave her a long, steady look before quietly saying, maybe you should speak to the owner before you make that decision. Julie's expression hardened at the man's suggestion. Speak to the owner? She had worked here long enough to know the kind of clientele this restaurant catered to. She didn't need to ask for permission to turn away someone who clearly didn't fit the image. Her pride prickled at the thought of being questioned by a man who, in her mind, didn't understand how things worked here. There's no need to involve the owner, Julie replied, her voice clipped. I'm responsible for seating the guests, and I've already explained the situation to you. I'm sorry, but I really can't help you. The elderly man stood quietly for a moment, his expression unreadable. He looked around the restaurant once more, taking in the elegant surroundings, the polished tables, the soft lighting, the perfectly arranged floral centerpieces. It wasn't the first time he'd encountered this kind of treatment, but it always left a bitter taste in his mouth. All right, he said finally, his voice steady but tinged with disappointment. I understand. But you should know that sometimes it's not about how someone looks. It's about how you treat people. That tells you everything you need to know. His words hung in the air, carrying a weight that Julie wasn't prepared for. She opened her mouth to respond, but no words came out. Instead, she watched as the elderly man turned and slowly made his way toward the door again. His shoulders slightly hunched as if the interaction had drained the strength from him. For a brief moment, Julie felt a pang of regret but she quickly pushed it aside, telling herself she had done nothing wrong. As the man reached the door, a figure entered the restaurant, brushing past him without a second glance. It was the owner. 
tall, well-dressed, and confident as always. He greeted the regulars as he walked in, unaware of what had just transpired at the entrance. The owner, James, was a man who had built the restaurant from the ground up. His success had been a source of pride for years, and he made sure to run the establishment with a sense of integrity and respect for all his patrons. As he moved through the dining room, shaking hands and exchanging pleasantries with the guests, he noticed something that caught his attention, a familiar figure walking slowly toward the exit. It took a moment for James to fully recognize the elderly man, but when he did, his heart skipped a beat. He knew that face, those steady, dignified features. It was a face he had known all his life. Without hesitation, James rushed toward the door, his pulse quickening with concern. Dad, he called out, his voice rising slightly in shock and confusion. Dad, wait! Julie, hearing the commotion, turned abruptly. Her eyes widened as she saw the owner, James, hurrying toward the elderly man she had just refused to serve. The color drained from her face as the realization hit her like a punch to the stomach. The owner's father? She stood frozen, her heart pounding as she watched the scene unfold before her. The elderly man stopped in his tracks, turning slowly to face his son. A soft, tired smile appeared on his lips. James, he said warmly, though there was a trace of weariness in his voice. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I was just looking to grab a bite, but I think I came at the wrong time. James's face darkened with a mixture of anger and disbelief as he glanced from his father to Julie, who stood paralyzed with shock. What do you mean, Dad? You're always welcome here. What happened? The elderly man sighed softly, his eyes resting on Julie for a moment before turning back to his son. I think there was just a little misunderstanding, he said gently. I wasn't exactly treated like a regular customer. Julie's heart raced as the situation unfolded. She could feel the tension rising in the room, and she didn't know how to respond. Her mind raced for an explanation, something that would make sense of the way she had handled the situation, but nothing came. She had refused to seat the elderly man, her boss's father, without even considering the possibility that he could be connected to anyone of importance. She had judged him based on appearance alone. James turned to Julie, his face a mask of barely controlled anger. Is this true? He asked, his voice tight. Did you refuse to serve my father? Julie swallowed hard, trying to find her voice. I, I didn't know he was your father, she stammered. He didn't have a reservation, and we have certain standards for our guests. James cut her off, his eyes blazing with frustration. Standards? He repeated, his voice rising. Is that what you call it? Turning away a man who just wanted to sit down and have a meal? He's been coming to this restaurant for years, long before you started working here. Julie opened her mouth to respond, but she realized there was no excuse that would justify what she had done. She had refused the man not because the restaurant was full, but because she had made a snap judgment based on his appearance. The weight of her mistake pressed down on her, and she could feel the eyes of the other staff members and patrons on her. I didn't mean any harm, Julie said weakly, her voice barely above a whisper. I just thought, I thought he didn't fit the profile of our usual customers. James's jaw tightened, his anger now mixed with a deep sense of disappointment. You thought he didn't fit the profile, he repeated, shaking his head. You know what, Julie? In this restaurant, we don't judge people by how they look. My father built this place with his own hands, and he's always been treated with respect here. You should know better. While the confrontation between James and Julie grew tense, the elderly man remained calm. He watched the exchange with the same quiet dignity that had marked his earlier interactions. Though his son was clearly angry on his behalf, the older man had learned long ago that anger rarely solved anything. He had faced discrimination and prejudice before. This incident, while hurtful, was far from new to him. He placed a hand on his son's shoulder, his voice calm and steady. James, it's all right, he said gently. There's no need to make a scene. I'm fine, really. But James shook his head, his frustration still simmering. No, Dad, it's not all right. You shouldn't have to go through this. Not here, not anywhere. He turned to Julie, his expression hardening again. What you did was wrong. You judged him without knowing anything about him, and that's unacceptable in this restaurant. Julie stood frozen, her face flushed with embarrassment and regret. 
She had never imagined that a situation like this could unfold so quickly or that her actions would have such consequences. The weight of her mistake was crushing and she wished she could take it all back. But it was too late. Her actions had been seen by everyone in the restaurant and there was no undoing the damage. The elderly man sighed softly, his eyes filled with a kind of sadness that came from years of enduring moments like this. He had hoped things were different now, that people would look past his age and the color of his skin. But moments like this reminded him that there was still much work to be done. I've been treated worse, believe me, the elderly man said quietly, his eyes meeting Julie's. But that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. As the tension in the room grew, the other staff members and a few patrons began to whisper among themselves, stealing glances at the unfolding scene. Some of the waiters exchanged looks of disbelief, while others seemed unsure of how to react. They had never seen their boss, James, so visibly upset before. The staff knew him as a calm, fair leader who rarely raised his voice, but today his anger was palpable, and it was clear that this incident had struck a deep nerve. Yeah. The whispers grew louder as words spread through the restaurant. Patrons who had witnessed the interaction from afar began to murmur among themselves, wondering what had caused such a scene. Some were shocked, others sympathetic, and a few simply curious about how the situation would resolve. One of the senior waiters, having caught wind of the conversation, stepped forward, his expression concerned. He had worked at the restaurant for years and had seen the elderly man before. He knew him as a regular customer, always polite, always quiet. The idea that one of the newer staff members had refused to serve him was unthinkable. I can't believe this is happening, one of the waiters whispered to another. That's the owner's father. How could she not know? I don't think she knew who he was, another waiter replied, shaking his head. But still, refusing to serve someone just because of how they look, that's not right. As the murmurs grew, Julie could feel the weight of everyone's eyes on her. The judgment, the whispers, the knowing glances, they all felt like daggers piercing through her already fragile composure. She knew she had made a terrible mistake and there was no escaping the consequences now. Unbeknownst to Julie, another person had been watching the entire scene unfold from a distance. At a table near the back of the restaurant, a well-dressed man in his mid-thirties had been quietly observing. He had arrived shortly before the elderly man entered and had been waiting for his meeting to begin, sipping a glass of water as he glanced over some documents. When he saw the way the elderly man was treated, his attention shifted completely. He watched as Julie dismissed the man and refused to seat him, noting the coldness in her demeanor. His expression remained neutral, but inside he was growing more and more unsettled by what he was witnessing. As the situation escalated and James rushed over to confront Julie, the man's curiosity grew. He listened carefully to the conversation. His interest peaked when he heard James call the elderly man, Dad. It wasn't hard to put the pieces together. The elderly man was clearly someone important, not just to the restaurant, but to the owner himself. The man at the table leaned back in his chair, considering what he had seen. He knew the restaurant well. It was one of his favorite spots in the city, a place where he frequently dined with colleagues and clients. But what he had just witnessed made him question the values of the staff. He had never experienced such treatment here, but seeing it happen to someone else left a bitter taste in his mouth. Before the situation could escalate any further, the man stood up, deciding it was time to intervene. As he approached the small group near the entrance, his presence was calm but commanding. Julie, James, and the elderly man all turned to look at him, surprised by the interruption. Excuse me, the man said, his voice steady and composed. I couldn't help but overhear what's been happening, and I think I might be able to offer some perspective. James is still fuming from the exchange with Julie looked at the man who had just approached. He didn't recognize him immediately, but something about his calm demeanor and the way he spoke made James pause. The elderly man, too, regarded the newcomer with quiet curiosity, while Julie seemed even more flustered by the sudden turn of events. I'm not trying to interrupt, the man continued, glancing between them, but I think it's important to address what just happened. You see, I've been coming to this restaurant for years, and I've always respected how well it's been run. That's why what I saw today surprised me. I said, James narrowed his eyes, uncertain of where the man was going with this. And what exactly did you see? He asked, his tone still tight with frustration. 
The man looked at Julie, his gaze soft but firm. I saw a situation where someone was judged based on their appearance rather than who they are. I saw a moment where someone should have been treated with dignity and respect but wasn't, and I believe that's something we can all learn from. Julie shifted uncomfortably, her face flushed with embarrassment. She could feel the weight of her mistake bearing down on her more heavily with each passing second. The man's words, though gentle, cut deep. He wasn't angry or accusatory, but his observations highlighted the core of the issue. She had made a snap judgment based on assumptions, and it had led to this painful confrontation. James glanced at his father, who remained calm despite everything that had transpired. He could see the disappointment in his father's eyes, though the older man had said little since the confrontation began. James felt the anger inside him begin to ebb, replaced by a heavy sadness. He had built this restaurant with pride, and the idea that his father, his greatest inspiration, had been mistreated here was deeply painful. The man who had stepped in looked at the elderly man, offering him a respectful nod. I believe an apology is in order, he said quietly, turning his attention to Julie. Not just for what happened today, but for the lesson it brings us all. As the tension began to ease, a flicker of recognition passed over the elderly man's face. He looked closely at the man who had just intervened, his eyes narrowing slightly as he studied his features. After a moment, his expression softened, and a small smile appeared on his lips. Wait a minute the elderly man said, his voice warm and full of recognition. Aren't you the lawyer my son's been talking about? I've seen you in here before, haven't I? The man smiled, nodding in confirmation. Yes, sir. I've had the pleasure of working with your son on a few projects over the years. I didn't realize who you were at first, but I've seen you in the restaurant a few times myself. It's an honor to meet you. James looked at the man with a new sense of appreciation. He had heard about him from his father, but they had never formally met. The lawyer had a reputation for fairness and wisdom, and it seemed fitting that he would step in during a moment like this. James extended his hand in thanks, grateful for the perspective the man had brought to the situation. Thank you for stepping in, James said sincerely. I appreciate your insight, and I think you're right. We all have something to learn from what happened here today. Julie, standing nearby, felt her stomach drop. The lawyer's calm demeanor and thoughtful words had only deepened the sense of shame that now weighed heavily on her. She hadn't known who the elderly man was, but that wasn't the point. She had judged him, and now it was painfully clear how wrong she had been. The elderly man, sensing the discomfort in the room, gently patted James on the back. Let's not drag this out, he said softly. What matters is how we move forward from here. Julie stood there, her heart pounding in her chest as the reality of her mistake fully sank in. She had allowed her assumptions to cloud her judgment, and now she was facing the consequences of her actions in front of her boss, his father, and the entire restaurant staff. The lawyer's intervention had only highlighted the gravity of what she had done. Her mind raced as she tried to come up with something to say, something to explain or defend herself. But the words wouldn't come. What could she say? That she hadn't meant to offend him? That she hadn't known who he was? None of that mattered now. She had refused to serve a man based solely on her perception of him, and it was a decision she couldn't take back. I... I didn't realize, Julie stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't know he was your father, James. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. James's expression was a mixture of disappointment and frustration. It doesn't matter if you knew he was my father or not, he said sharply. You shouldn't have treated him or anyone like that. This restaurant is supposed to be a place where everyone is treated with respect, no matter who they are. Julie nodded, tears pricking at the corners of her eyes. She knew he was right. She had let her prejudices get the better of her, and now she was paying the price. I'm sorry, she said softly, her voice trembling. I made a terrible mistake. The elderly man who had been watching quietly, stepped forward, his expression kind but firm. I appreciate the apology, young lady, he said gently, but it's important to understand why what you did was wrong. This isn't just about me being the owner's father. It's about how we treat people, no matter what they look like or where they come from. The weight of the moment hung heavily in the air, and everyone present could feel the tension between Julie, James, and the elderly man. 
Even the other staff members, who had been whispering among themselves, now stood in silence, their eyes glued to the unfolding scene. No one dared to interrupt. This was a moment of reckoning, not just for Julie, but for the entire restaurant. Julie wiped away a stray tear, her hands trembling slightly. She had never meant for things to escalate like this. In her mind, she had simply been following the unspoken rules of the restaurant, ensuring that the clientele met the high standards expected of them. But now she realized how flawed her thinking had been. Those standards were not just about appearances. They were about treating every customer with dignity and respect. James, still visibly upset, took a deep breath, trying to calm himself. He didn't want to escalate the situation further, but he couldn't let what had happened slide either. Julie. I built this restaurant to be a place where anyone, no matter who they are, can come and enjoy a meal, he said, his voice firm but measured. I don't want this to ever happen again. We don't judge people here. We welcome them. Julie nodded slowly, her voice barely audible. I understand, she said. I'll do better. I promise. The elderly man, ever the peacemaker, placed a hand on his son's shoulder. James, I think she understands now he said softly. Let's not be too harsh. What's important is that she's learned from this. James glanced at his father, the frustration slowly draining from his face. He knew his father well. He was a man of forgiveness, always quick to give people second chances. And while James still felt angry about how his father had been treated, he respected the older man's desire to move forward without holding on to the bitterness of the moment. Julie stood there, her heart heavy with remorse grateful for the chance to make things right. But she knew that the road to redemption wouldn't be easy. As the tension slowly eased, James turned to his father, grateful for his calm wisdom in the moment. His father had always been a source of guidance and strength, not just for him, but for the many who knew him. The elderly man, now standing beside his son, gave a small nod, signaling his desire to de-escalate the situation. James let out a deep breath, knowing that he had to address the situation, but in a way that aligned with the values his father had instilled in him. Dad, James began, softening his tone. I'm really sorry this happened to you today. You should never have been treated this way, especially not here. The elderly man smiled gently, a warmth radiating from him that made the atmosphere feel less charged. Son, I've been around long enough to know that people make mistakes. The real test is whether they're willing to learn from them. Julie, listening to their exchange, felt her face flush with both shame and surprise. She had no idea that the elderly man standing before her was the father of the restaurant's owner, a man with deep roots in the establishment she worked for. She had never considered that the person she turned away could be so connected to the very place she worked to uphold. The realization that she had denied service to such a key figure in the restaurant's history sent a cold chill down her spine. James looked at Julie, his expression softer now. This man, he said, motioning to his father, is the reason this restaurant exists. He's the one who helped me build it from the ground up, and he's always been welcome here. He should be treated with the respect he deserves, not just because he's my father, but because he's a person who matters, just like every customer who walks through those doors. Julie stood speechless, her mind reeling from the revelation. She had worked at the restaurant for a little over a year, and though she knew about the owner's background, she never would have imagined that the elderly man she had turned away was the one who helped build this place. Her heart sank as she realized the full weight of her mistake. Not only had she discriminated against a man based on his appearance, but that man was the very reason she had a job here at all. I, I didn't know, Julie whispered, her voice barely audible as her face flushed with embarrassment. I didn't realize who he was. The elderly man raised a hand to gently stop her. That's the thing, young lady, he said softly, his voice calm but firm. It shouldn't matter who I am. You didn't know I was the owner's father, and that's fine. But you saw an old man walk into this restaurant, and you judged me, not based on anything I said or did, but because of how I looked. That's the problem. Julie nodded, her eyes filling with tears of regret. She had no defense left. Everything the elderly man was saying was true, and the shame of it washed over her like a tidal wave. She had always prided herself on being a professional, 
someone who could handle even the most demanding customers. But today she had failed, failed not just as a waitress, but as a person. James, seeing the genuine regret in Julie's face, felt his anger begin to soften. He wasn't one to hold a grudge, but this incident had cut deeply. However, his father's calm demeanor and gentle wisdom helped him see the situation for what it was, a moment of learning. And though Julie had made a serious mistake, James could see that she was genuinely sorry for it. I think my father is right, James said after a long pause. What matters now is whether you learn from this. We all make mistakes, but how you handle them afterward says a lot about your character. The elderly man, still standing tall with the dignity that had carried him through life, gave Julie a long, thoughtful look. There was no anger in his eyes, no desire for punishment, only a quiet resolve to ensure that this would be a moment of growth for her. He had faced many instances of discrimination in his life, moments far worse than this, but he knew that this was an opportunity to teach something important. I've seen the world change a lot in my time, he said softly, his voice filled with the wisdom of years gone by. But there's still more to be done. Respect isn't something you should give just to those who look like they belong in a place like this. It's something you should offer to everyone, no matter who they are. Julie wiped away a tear, nodding slowly. She could feel the weight of his words pressing down on her, and she realized that this wasn't just about keeping her job or saving face. It was about learning to be a better person. She had let her biases get the better of her, and now she was facing the consequences of that choice. I'm so sorry, she said again, her voice trembling. I never should have judged you like that. I don't know what else to say. The elderly man smiled kindly, his eyes twinkling with a mixture of understanding and forgiveness. We all have moments where we don't live up to our best selves, he said. What matters is what you do next. You've apologized and that's a good start. But what I'd like to see is for you to carry this lesson forward, to treat every person who walks through that door with the same respect you'd want for yourself. Julie nodded, the tears flowing freely now. She didn't know how to express the gratitude she felt for his kindness and understanding, but she knew she would never forget this moment. James stood by, watching the interaction between his father and Julie with a deep sense of pride. He had always admired his father's ability to turn even the most painful situations into moments of growth and learning. As a young man, James had watched his father face countless challenges with grace and resilience, and those lessons had shaped the way James ran his restaurant. His father had taught him that people deserve respect, regardless of their background or appearance, and that philosophy had been the foundation of the restaurant's success. Now seeing his father handle this situation with such dignity and compassion, James felt that familiar sense of awe. His father had every right to be angry, to demand retribution for the way he had been treated, but instead he chose forgiveness. It was a reminder of the kind of man James aspired to be. James placed a hand on his father's shoulder, his voice filled with emotion. Dad, I don't know what to say, he admitted. You've always been able to handle things like this better than anyone I know. I'm proud of you. The elderly man chuckled softly, his eyes twinkling with warmth. Son, I've had a lot of practice, he said with a smile. The world can be a tough place sometimes, but I've always believed that kindness is the best way to change hearts. We can't control how people see us but we can control how we respond. Julie, standing nearby, listened quietly to their exchange. She felt a sense of relief, knowing that she had been given a second chance. But more than that, she felt inspired by the bond between James and his father, a bond built on mutual respect and shared values. It was clear that this family had a deep understanding of what really mattered, and she was grateful to have witnessed it firsthand. With the conversation drawing to a close, Julie felt a strong need to express her remorse once more, not just with words, but with action. She stepped forward, her hands clasped nervously in front of her, and looked directly at the elderly man. I promise that I'll do better, she said, her voice steady but filled with emotion. I'll make sure that I treat every person who walks through that door with the respect they deserve. I'm truly sorry for what I did today and I'm grateful for your forgiveness. The elderly man smiled kindly, nodding in approval. I believe you, young lady, he said. 
Just remember that every day is a chance to be better than the day before. Take what you've learned here and apply it, not just in this restaurant, but in life. Julie nodded, her heart swelling with gratitude. She had learned a lesson that went far beyond her job as a waitress. It was a lesson about humanity, about kindness, and about the importance of treating others with respect regardless of appearances. She had been given a chance to grow from this experience, and she was determined not to waste it. James, seeing the sincerity in Julie's eyes, felt a sense of relief. He knew that the road to redemption wasn't easy, but he believed in giving people the opportunity to change. His father had taught him that much. All right, Julie, he said, his voice firm but not unkind. Let's move forward from this. I expect you to live up to the values we hold dear in this restaurant. Can you do that? Julie nodded eagerly, her voice filled with determination. Yes, absolutely. I won't let you down. James smiled, knowing that they had all come out of this situation a little wiser. His father had shown them the way, as he always had. Though the atmosphere had softened, there was still a matter of consequences to be addressed. Julie, despite the grace and forgiveness extended to her by both James and his father, knew that her actions couldn't simply be overlooked. The restaurant had a reputation to maintain, and what had happened today had tested the very core of its values. She braced herself, knowing that there would likely be some disciplinary action for what she had done. James glanced at Julie, his expression thoughtful. He knew that while his father had forgiven her, it was important for the restaurant to set an example. It wasn't about punishing her harshly. It was about making sure the lesson carried weight. Julie, he began slowly, we've all learned something important today, but there are still consequences for your actions. Julie nodded, her gaze fixed on the floor. I understand, she said quietly, her voice steady though laced with regret. She had expected this and was prepared to face whatever came next. Losing her job was a very real possibility and she had already come to terms with it. I'm not going to fire you, James said, surprising her, but I am going to put you on probation. You need to take some time to reflect on what happened here and learn from it. During that time, you'll be reassigned to duties that will give you the chance to engage with every kind of customer who walks through those doors. And I expect you to do it with the respect and care that we stand for. Julie looked up, relief flooding her expression. Thank you, she said sincerely her voice trembling. I won't let you down. I'll prove to you that I can do better. James nodded, satisfied with his decision. Good. I believe you will. The elderly man, who had been quietly listening, smiled warmly. Everyone deserves a second chance, son, he said softly. I'm glad you gave her one. After the conversation with James and Julie, the elderly man turned his attention to the rest of the restaurant. The few patrons who had witnessed the situation sat quietly their eyes still following him as he moved to the center of the room. He cleared his throat softly, speaking not just to Julie, but to everyone within earshot. There's something I want to say, he began, his voice carrying a quiet authority. This isn't just about what happened today. It's about how we treat one another in general. We live in a world where people often judge each other based on appearances, where assumptions are made before words are even spoken. He paused, his gaze sweeping the room, making sure his message reached everyone. But those assumptions don't define who we are. What defines us is how we choose to treat one another, whether we offer kindness or judgment, whether we build someone up or tear them down. I've lived long enough to know that life is too short to waste on hate or prejudice. We all deserve respect. Julie, standing nearby, felt a lump form in her throat as the elderly man spoke. His words hit home for her, making her realize just how deeply ingrained some of her unconscious biases had been. She wasn't proud of what she had done, but hearing him speak made her even more determined to change. I hope that what happened today will be a lesson for everyone here, the elderly man continued, his voice softening. It's never too late to learn, never too late to do better. That's something we all need to remember. His words were met with quiet murmurs of agreement from the patrons and staff alike. There was a sense of reverence in the room, a shared understanding that this moment had transcended the bounds of a simple mistake. It had become a powerful reminder of the importance of treating others with dignity, no matter who they were. As the elderly man finished speaking, 
The restaurant fell into a hushed silence. The staff, who had been watching the situation unfold from a distance, stood quietly, each of them reflecting on what had just been said. They had always prided themselves on working in a place that upheld values of respect and hospitality, but today had been a wake-up call. It was clear that those values had to be lived, not just spoken. One of the senior waiters who had been with the restaurant for years approached Julie after hearing the elderly man's words. He placed a hand on her shoulder, offering her a small, understanding nod. We've all made mistakes, Julie, he said quietly. What matters is how you move forward from here. You've got the chance to turn this around. Julie looked at him, her eyes filled with both gratitude and determination. I know, she replied softly. I won't take this chance for granted. The rest of the staff, too, began to process the gravity of the situation. Some whispered among themselves, exchanging glances that spoke of quiet reflection. Others stood alone, lost in thought, replaying the day's events in their minds. It wasn't just Julie who had learned a lesson. Each of them had been reminded of the importance of treating every customer with care and respect, no matter how they looked or where they came from. And the kitchen staff, who had heard about the incident from the servers, felt it too. The chef, known for his high standards, had always demanded excellence in every dish that left his kitchen. But today's events had made him realize that the excellence they strive for had to extend beyond the food. It had to encompass every interaction, every moment of service, and every person who walked through the door. In the days that followed, the restaurant buzzed with quiet but meaningful change. James made sure that every staff member understood the importance of what had happened and the lesson that had been learned. There were no sweeping changes to policy or grand announcements, just a renewed commitment to the values that had built the restaurant's reputation in the first place. Julie, now working under probation, was given tasks that allowed her to engage more directly with customers from all walks of life. She was no longer assigned only to the most important tables or high-profile guests. Instead, she was tasked with serving anyone and everyone who walked through the door. At first, it was difficult for her. Every interaction reminded her of the mistakes she had made. But over time, she began to see the beauty in it. Each new customer was an opportunity to redeem herself. She greeted everyone with the same warm smile, the same careful attention, regardless of how they looked or what they wore. Slowly, she felt her confidence return, not in her ability to please high-paying guests, but in her ability to offer kindness and respect to anyone who came her way. One day, while serving a small family who had come in for a modest lunch, Julie caught herself smiling genuinely. The interaction was simple, pleasant, and without fanfare but it was the kind of service she had once taken for granted. Now she saw it for what it was, a chance to make someone's day a little brighter. The rest of the staff, inspired by the change in Julie, followed suit. There was a renewed sense of camaraderie among them, a shared understanding that the restaurant was more than just a place to serve food. It was a place where people could feel valued and respected. The atmosphere shifted subtly, but it was noticeable. Patrons, too, began to pick up on the warmth that now permeated the dining room. As weeks passed, Julie found herself reflecting more and more on that day, on how close she had come to losing everything because of her own narrow-mindedness. The regret still lingered, but it was no longer paralyzing. Instead, it fueled her determination to be better, to grow, and to make amends in every small way she could. One evening after a particularly busy dinner service, Julie stayed behind to help clean up. The restaurant was empty, the tables cleared, and the soft hum of the dishwasher filled the quiet space. As she wiped down the counters, she couldn't help but think about the elderly man who had so graciously forgiven her. She wondered if she would ever have the chance to see him again, to thank him properly for the kindness he had shown. Her thoughts were interrupted by a familiar voice. You're still here? Julie turned, surprised to see James standing in the doorway. He had stayed late to work on some paperwork but had noticed her lingering. Yeah, she replied, offering a small smile. Just finishing up. James nodded, stepping into the dining room. You've been doing well, he said, his tone approving. I've noticed the change in how you handle things, and I'm proud of the progress you've made. Julie's heart swelled with gratitude. Thank you, she said quietly. I've been trying really hard. I'm just, I'm still so sorry for what happened that day. I think about it all the time. James smiled softly, 
his expression understanding. Regret can be a powerful teacher, he said, but don't let it weigh you down too much. You've learned from it, and that's what matters. My father believes in second chances, and so do I. As Julie stood there hearing James's words, she felt a weight lift from her shoulders. The past weeks had been difficult, but they had also been transformative. She had grown not just as a waitress, but as a person. Still, she knew there was one thing left that she needed to do, something she had been thinking about since that day. Do you think your father will come back? Julie asked hesitantly, her voice filled with hope. I'd like to apologize to him properly. I know I said sorry before, but I feel like I owe him more than that. James considered her question for a moment before nodding. I'm sure he will. My father loves this place. He may not come by every day, but he's always been proud of what we've built here. I think he'd be happy to see how much you've changed. Julie smiled, a sense of relief washing over her. I hope so. I want to make things right. James gave her an encouraging nod. You already have, Julie. You've shown that you're willing to learn and grow, and that's all anyone can ask for. As they finished tidying up the restaurant, Julie felt a sense of closure she hadn't experienced since the incident. It wasn't that she had forgotten what happened. She knew she never would. But she had finally reached a place where she could move forward, knowing she had done everything in her power to make amends. James, too, felt a sense of satisfaction. He had seen his staff come together, watched as Julie turned a painful mistake into a moment of growth, and he knew that his father would be proud of the way things had unfolded. The restaurant, more than ever, felt like the place they had always envisioned it to be, a place where respect and kindness were at the core of everything they did. A few days later, as the lunch rush was winding down, the familiar figure of the elderly man walked through the front doors of the restaurant. Julie noticed him immediately, her heart skipping a beat. She had been hoping for this moment, a chance to speak with him again, to express her gratitude and apologize more sincerely. This time, she didn't hesitate. She walked over with a newfound sense of purpose, her heart pounding but her mind clear. Sir, she said softly, her voice steady but filled with emotion. I'm so glad you came back. The elderly man looked at her, his warm smile spreading across his face. I told you I'd be back, he said kindly. This place has always felt like home to me. Julie smiled, though her heart was still heavy with the memory of what had happened. I wanted to say thank you. She began her eyes meeting. For giving me the chance to make things right. I've thought about that day every single moment since it happened. And I want you to know that I've learned so much from it. The elderly man listened quietly, his gaze steady and understanding. I could see that in you, he replied gently. We all make mistakes, young lady. What matters is whether we learn from them and move forward with humility. I'm proud of you for how you've handled things. Julie's eyes welled with tears, but this time they were tears of relief and gratitude. I'll never forget what you said to me that day, she admitted. It changed the way I see things, not just here at work, but in life. I promise to carry that lesson with me always. The elderly man patted her hand, his touch light and comforting. I know you will, he said with a wink. Now, how about that meal I came in for last time? Julie smiled through her tears nodding eagerly. Right this way, sir, she said, leading him to the best table in the house. This time, there was no hesitation, no judgment, just the simple act of service that came from a place of genuine respect. As the elderly man settled into his seat, Julie moved swiftly and gracefully, ensuring that every detail of his dining experience was perfect. She took his order with a warmth that came from the heart, no longer focused on outward appearances, but on the joy of serving someone with kindness and care. Each interaction with him felt like a chance to redeem herself, and she embraced it fully. Throughout the meal, Julie checked in on him frequently, her smile genuine, her attention unwavering. She wanted him to feel the respect he had always deserved, but that she had initially failed to show. With every plate she set down, every refill of his drink, she felt herself growing more confident in her ability to be the kind of person who could rise above her past mistakes. The other staff members noticed the difference in her, too. There was no longer a sense of superiority in the way she moved through the restaurant, no hidden judgment or silent hierarchy. Instead, she approached every guest, every table, with the same level of respect and care. 
The humility she had learned from her mistake had transformed her, and it was evident to everyone around her. As the meal came to an end, the elderly man leaned back in his chair, a satisfied smile on his face. That was wonderful, he said warmly, his eyes twinkling. You've done well, young lady. Julie smiled, her heart full. Thank you, sir, she said softly. It means so much to hear you say that. The elderly man stood up slowly, reaching for his coat. Before he left, he turned to Julie one last time. You've proven that you can learn and grow. That's the greatest kind of redemption. Keep it up, and you'll go far. Julie watched as he left, feeling a deep sense of peace and closure. She had been given a second chance, and she had taken it. It wasn't just about redeeming herself in the eyes of the elderly man. It was about becoming the person she wanted to be, the person she knew she could be. The story of what had happened in the restaurant spread quietly through the local community. Patrons who frequented the establishment heard about the incident. But what stood out most wasn't the mistake that had been made. It was the way the situation had been handled. Word got around about how the elderly man, the owner's father, had responded with kindness and forgiveness, and how Julie had embraced her second chance with humility and determination. For many, it was a reminder of the power of grace and the importance of community. The restaurant's reputation wasn't tarnished by the incident. If anything, it was strengthened. People admired the way James and his father had upheld their values and how the staff had rallied behind the lesson learned. The restaurant became known not just for its excellent food and service, but for the way it treated people. Patrons felt a renewed sense of warmth when they dined there, knowing that they would be welcomed with open arms, regardless of who they were or what they looked like. The sense of community that had always been present in the restaurant grew even stronger, and it became a place where everyone felt they belonged. The staff, too, felt the change. There was a deeper camaraderie among them, a shared understanding of the values they upheld. They looked out for one another, and they took pride in the work they did, knowing that it went beyond just serving food. It was about creating a space where people felt seen, valued, and respected. Julie, once hesitant and unsure, became a leader among her peers. Her transformation was evident to everyone, and she used her experience to mentor the newer waitstaff, reminding them of the importance of kindness, empathy, and humility. She had found her place, not just in the restaurant, but in the community that had embraced her. Months passed, and the memory of that day, the day the elderly man had come into the restaurant and been refused service, faded into the background. But for Julie, it would always remain a pivotal moment in her life, a turning point that had changed her forever. She often thought about the lessons she had learned, not just from the elderly man's words, but from the entire experience. It had taught her the power of humility, the importance of second chances, and the value of treating every person with respect, no matter who they were or where they came from. One afternoon, as she prepared for another shift, Julie looked around the restaurant with a sense of pride. It was more than just a place of work. It was a place where people came to feel valued, and she, along with the rest of the staff, had played a part in creating that environment. As she tied her apron and greeted her first table of the day, Julie knew that she had grown not just as a waitress, but as a person. The day the elderly man had walked through those doors had changed everything, and she was grateful for it. She would never forget the kindness he had shown her, the way he had given her a chance to redeem herself, to learn from her mistake, and to become better because of it. It was a day that had tested her character, and in the end, it had made her stronger. As she moved through the dining room, greeting each guest with a smile, Julie felt a deep sense of peace. She had learned that respect wasn't something you earned based on appearances or status. It was something you gave freely to everyone. And that simple truth had changed her life. 